day 99 solution, we're nearly there. We're going to start by scraping the community and then we're going to see if we can automate that so it happens regularly, store it in a database and see where we go from there. But let's start with that scraping process. So we'll import requests and then get beautiful soup coming in. Let's find the community page, which is this one. Copy the URL. Download the page. Get the HTML. Put it into Beautiful Soup so it can analyze all the parts. And then we need to identify what we're looking for. So these are the events. If I inspect them, let's see what we get. This seems to be the link. And that's probably the other one. There we go. So it's this class. It's divs with this class that we need to access. Let's just print that out and see what we get. Yeah, we're getting a lot here. Now we'd have to find a way to differentiate between everything on there because you can see there we've got the events. The events are broken down. And then we've got the next heading. So I think if we just ignore zero we we'll also check that it doesn't contain that phrase there we go so that's pulling out the two we want now so let's put oh, we need to do a bit more work than that because we're getting both those things we probably need to get um a date and name uh, and there's a little we probably need the URL as well. So let's just print out, instead of printing out the link, let's print, instead of print out the text, let's print out the entire thing and see what we get. Because there's a lot going on here. We've got a link there. So I think we can get that with find all, can't we? So uh, this link equals link dot find all. Well, maybe just find this time. Let's see what we get out of that. We're getting a lot going on there, which I didn't expect. So maybe I need to do that there. Ah, there we go. Yes, I'm getting the links, for both of those and the titles. There's something going on here where we've got lack of a space between those two things. Maybe that's not a space. Let's print that out again as normal and see what's happening between the name and the date. Now it's hard to find. So I'm going to do control F here. I'm just going to put nov because we knew we saw some Novembers. So there's, okay, so there's a span there. The span there with the name of it in. Uh, sorry, with the date of it in. So where's the name? So it'd be for all that stuff, I would imagine. Span called that. Let's just find it, see if we can find two of them. No, just one. I can't even find the original now. Okay. Okay. Let's think of another way that we can add that space in. I suppose we could look for any of the months, couldn't we? Do you know what? I'm going to leave it like that. I think that that'll be fine. It, it's obvious what's going on there. Um, what we probably could do is just do a replace and a big one that goes and finds like Jan, Feb, March, all that sort of stuff and just does a, a replace, put a space in between them. But it seems like a lot of effort for what we're trying to do here. Then I do really need the date separately, don't I, so I can store things in that. Mm. No, I'll index them like this. This will be fine. Right, so we need to bring in REPLDB. So I'm going to pull open the sidebar. I'm going to bring up the database and I'm just going to pop it over there so I can have it on the side. I want to bring that in. Okay, I think what we'll do is we'll put that as the key and that as the value. So we'll just run that once and we should end up with that going into the database. Hopefully, so we should end up with two keys, which we do have now. Great. So now we need to put an if on there. Before we do it, we'll 
bring it in. We probably want to get the um, the list of keys before that. If link dot text not in keys, do that. So if we run this again now, the key value shouldn't go up at all. I think we're good. So it's good. So it's basically only going to do anything if that runs and it found a new one. But that's also to do at the email bit. And I suppose also we do need to check to make sure that this is an event that's in the list. <laughs> um, right, okay. Let's turn this into a subroutine. While we're here, and let's just very quickly call GitHub, so it should run exactly the same. I'm going to do interests and I make a list here. I'm going to do it all in lowercase. So I'm interested in teams. I'm interested in education. I'm interested in, I'll leave it as that for the next. We'll definitely pick up one of these two then, won't we? So, put an and here. And let's go through. I think we need to explode this. Okay, right. Um, or split it, I suppose. Um, words equals link dot text dot split for word in words dot lower. No, for word in words. If word dot lower is in, and what we call it, interests. Let's have a, let's have a variable. I'm interested. Make that false. So if the word's in there, I'm interested becomes true. Then I can just do if I'm interested and link not in there. Run that now, that shouldn't change it. But when it sees more now, it should add it into it. And only if I'm interested in it, I can keep, of course, I can go back and add like now to that list of interests and that'll run and add that to it. I think all I need to do is add the email bit there and then put it in the timed, um, put it scheduled. So let's schedule it first. I need to install the package. So we get the package manager up. While that works, it's magic in the background. Let's put the code in. Time. I'm going to need OS, I'm going to need SMTP lib later on, so I'll bring those in. Might as well bring the, the email stuff in while I'm here and thinking about it. There we go. Right, so. <clears throat> let's say we check every, every three hours. Put our while true loop in. Need to run your pending. And then sleep it for a second so we're not doing millions of check operations all the time. Okay, so let's run that and check that works. Yeah, that's good. So at this point now, you should be doing always on. Um, what I'm going to do though, just uh, for testing purposes, is I'm going to do a get hub first beforehand. So we'll get the information and it's not added anything new to the database. As soon as it finds something new, that'll be good. What we'll do to test it is we'll delete the database once we've written the email code. Uh, so the next thing is bringing over the email. So let's bring up secrets. There we go. And I need to add some secrets to my database with my uh, one time app passwords for my Gmail. Of course, remember if you're using something different, you might just better put your normal username and password for your email on that, but that is quite dangerous. If somebody gets access to your REPL and your secrets, then they'll have your passwords. So probably not a good idea to do that directly. Okay, secrets are in there. So if we're good to go, let's email people start by bringing in my password and username 
from the uh, environment bit. Actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this as an email, am I? Yes. Email link text link. Uh, link dot, sorry. Link dot text this link. So let's write the email subroutine. Okay, so start off with our username and password being set. Then in our server, shall we call it host this time? So it's a bit more in line with what we're always doing. smtp.gmail.com. Our port is going to be 587. Set up our connection now. And we can do host equals host and port equals port. So don't forget. Start our TLS now for encryption and log in with username and password. So run that again just to check that we've not got any problems with it. Looks good. Make our message now. My multi part. I'm going to send this to me from me. Subject equals new community event. I think we need to make the text for this now. So, text so is going to be a hyperlink, it's going to be let's do an F string with the three quotes trick. A href equals. I just put a link in. Far too many things going on there. There we go. So inside this bit is going to be our link. Inside this bit is going to be our text. That looks okay to me. Syntax highlighting's got messed up though, so let's hope that's okay. I'm just going to run it to make sure it's not freaked out. I haven't got like, no, that seems to be okay. Three at the start, three at the end. Syntax highlighting has got a bit confused though, but we're good there. Um, then I need to attach it. So message dot attach. I'm going to attach my text in HTML format. Okay. Send message. Delete the message. Let's start the program by deleting everything in the database. So we'll list all keys. Equal key. Begin with keys. Del DB key. So that'll start off by deleting everything. So we should be able to test the entire flow of this now. Okay. So it looks good. I should have one thing in my database, which I do. And I should have an email coming in with a link to the community event I'm interested in. And that just happens automatically. And that's great. Because that's going to make my life a lot easier. I don't need to keep my eye on my community now. If I turn on my uh, always on, I can leave that running all the time. And it'll just notify me if any community event gets added that I think is particularly interesting. Which is pretty cool.